And believe it or not, we might do the whole chapter. Yeah. Woo! Oh, fly away. <laughs> Genesis chapter 38. Yes, yes. Father, we ask that as we open your word today, that you will speak to us yes. clearly. Yes. Our hearts are awake and listening. Yes. We say, speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Yes. We want to hear what Ooh. you're saying. Hallelujah. And we thank you. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter 38. Well, look at verse 1. It says, And it came to pass at the time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite whose name was Hiram. And Judah saw there was a daughter of certain Canaanites whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. And she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Ur. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name Onan. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 says, And she yet again conceived and bore a son, and called his name she Shelah. And he was a at Chizib when she bare him. Mm -hmm. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Remember that name, Tamar. Mm -hmm. Remember that name, Tamar. Mm -hmm. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was was Tamar. So we're looking today at a, 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 at a, a Jewish culture and the surrounding areas and how they do different things. In this particular area of, um, of the nation and, and the servants of God, you didn't find a wife by going or, or mate by going to the club. You didn't find a, a wife by, by going on the internet or, or by any of those kind of things. God would bring people together. Even in the Garden of Eden, God put Adam to sleep, took a rib out of his out of his side. That's why men love ribs today. Uh, took, a, <laughs> took a rib out of, took a rib, took a rib out of his side, and he made a woman and brought the woman to him. And, and Adam said, Wow, man, and called a woman. Um, and so um, but he brought them together. And so you see in this situation, it says Judah uh, uh, took a wife for her, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. What I want you to do today is we're going to walk through this passage because I've come, come to this particular passage a couple of times in the last couple of weeks as we were talking about kingdom and redeemer. Oh, mm -hmm. I want to read this because I was reading the last time the Lord said, keep on reading. Yeah. And I kept on reading and I went, wow, look at what happened. Come on. Amen. So let's look at verse 7. It says, and Judas, uh, excuse me, and Ur, who was Judas firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord. He was yeah. wicked. What does wicked mean? He was bad dude. He was wicked in the sight of, of, of the Lord. Yeah. And that's whose sight matters. It doesn't matter what society says. Mm -hmm. Whatever God calls good is good, right. and whatever he calls wicked is yeah. wicked. Yeah. The world doesn't get to choose what's good and what's bad. Come on now. Okay? That's why we talk all this stuff about, about times are changing and so forth. Mm -hmm. Times may change, but God doesn't. Hallelujah. The new morality looks a whole lot like the old immorality. Come on. Okay. Ah, so ah. God hasn't changed, okay? So he says, er, he, he had a wicked son. And listen, here's the other thing. Listen, no matter how good you are personally, your children still can go the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. Your job is to train them, and, and that's your job. But it still doesn't guarantee that they're going to turn out to be good kids. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they have to make their own decisions mm -hmm. when they grow up. You want to raise them right and hope it sticks. And, and, and no matter how they go, the teaching will stick. Even if they walk away from God, that's when the Bible talks about that they will not um, depart from it. That teaching will be there. They'll be out doing crazy stuff, but they'll remember what mom and dad taught them. Come on now. They'll remember the example that mom and dad gave them, Come on even if they're out acting a fool. That's why they want to do their bad stuff in the dark. Because they, they don't want nobody to see it. They're ashamed of what they're doing. Amen. So I keep on going. And so um, it says, Ur, his firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. The, what happened? The Lord slew him. What happened? The Lord killed him. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. He was a wicked guy. The Lord killed him. Verse 8. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her, 
and raise up seed to that to that brother. Mm -hmm. That sounds weird to us because that's not what we normally do. But in the, the nation of Israel, your heritage, your family line was super important. It's how your your um your inheritance went. It's how the land went. The land was and, and property was never meant to leave the family tree. And so it was important. So God set up a way that we call um like a kinsman redeemer mm -hmm. to, to make sure that the family line went on and on and on so that your family name would not just be chopped off in history. Oh, he kept it going. So the way they did it in this particular is one of your brothers was to go in into your, your wife, um, um, who's a widow now, and raise up children to the family name. That sounds a little weird to us, but listen, they're not in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and they're not in Utah, okay? This is their culture. This is the way it flowed in their culture. Amen? Yes. So, he said, go and raise up seed to that brother. Now, look at verse 8. You will raise up seed to your brother. It's not about you. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. That's why it would never work in America. Because everything in America is about me. Yeah. And what I want. Ooh. And what I get from it. Ooh. This was to raise up family for your brother. To your kindred. Ooh. It was to raise up family for them. He says, go in and raise up seed to thy brother. Verse 9 says, and only knew that the seed would not be his. Wow. He knew it. Okay? And it came to pass that when he went in into his, his brother's wife, that he spilled it, uh, that he spilled it on the ground, lest he should give seed to his brother. Oh. So what did he do? Only knew that it wasn't going to be his child. <laughs> but he still wanted to go in. Oh. Okay. He still wanted to go in and get good. Okay. Have a good time. You know, put on some Barry White. You know, turn off the lights. He, he, he still wanted that part, but he didn't want the responsibility part to it. And folks, that speaks volumes to who we are today. As people. We, we want all the benefits, but none of the responsibilities. We want all the benefits. We, we love somebody giving me. You know, you, you're raising them up, in it, and, and they, they tell parents, parents, it's your responsibility, but the kids don't want no responsibility. You had me. You got to take care of me. Yeah, I'm raising you up. It's, you got to have some responsibility in this, this also. People want jobs not to work, but to get paid. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. You know. See, I just encourage you to do it. People want a job and they want to get paid. Come on. But they don't want to work. They don't want to work. They want the benefits well, of the job. Well, now. But not the responsibility of the job. Well, come on now. People want to have kids well, so they can get a tax break. Well, they want to have kids so that, uh, and in some cultures, they want to have kids because the more kids you have, the more social welfare you get. Yeah, just yeah. saying. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just throwing it out there. Just and it's true. <laughs> they, they want they want the benefits of it. They want yeah. the, the check to get bigger, yeah. but they don't want to raise the kids. Yeah. Well, they want the benefits, but not the responsibility. Come on, now. People want to come to church and they want a pastor to take care of them, but they don't want none of the responsibilities. Of being a part of a church. <laughs> oh, oh he, he need to shut up on it. He, he need to stop. He, he need to stop that. And so, and listen, no, 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 listen, listen, listen. People want to go be in the house and they want dinner to be served. But they don't want none of the responsibilities of cleaning up the mess that came with the dinner. People want to come to Thanksgiving dinner, but they don't want to bring nothing. Right? They, they want the benefits of coming. In fact, they want to take some home when they leave. Didn't bring a thing. They, yeah. See, they want all the benefits, but none of the responsibilities. That's right. They'll come in with they to go carts. That's right. In the back. Carts. Okay. But none of the responsibilities. So Onan wanted to go in to his brother's wife. He had no problem with that part. He just didn't want to raise up no seed into it. So do you think that was a good thing or a bad thing? That was bad. Verse 10 says, And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him. God killed him because God didn't like what he did. Come on now. Now, as we watch here, we're going to see here that the apple didn't fall far from the tree. 
Mm. And we're going to see, listen, here's, here's what I want you to understand. Here's, here's what the, the point is tonight, today. Bad decisions will snowball on you. Wow, wow. Once you start making bad decisions, they have a snowball effect. In other words, one bad decision usually leads to a second bad decision and a third bad decision. And before you know it, you got a whole big mess on your hand. All because somebody started out making a bad decision. Come on now. Snowball on you. Okay. It, it'll just keep snowballing on you. So let's just watch this thing. Huh. And so, it says, the thing, verse 10, the thing that he did displeased the Lord, therefore he slew him. Verse 11 says, then said Judah to Tamar. Remember that word, that woman, Tamar. Tamar is just a woman here in a culture where women aren't thought too highly of. Mm -hmm. She's in a culture where women are told that you got to do what your man tell you to do. And they shut up. See, that wouldn't work in America either. But anyway, I'm just saying. <laughs> and so she's in a culture where, where the women just did whatever the men said. And so she's just here now. So far, she ain't done nothing wrong. No. Okay. She's just watching stuff that's happening. So verse 11 says, Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, his daughter-in-law, he says, remain a widow mm -hmm. at thy father's house till Shayla, my son, be grown. Mm -hmm. So what's he telling him? He's telling him, don't go to the club. Well, hold on, hold on. Looking for a man to replace your husband that died. Okay, mm -hmm. don't do that. So don't go on match.com. Okay? Don't, don't, don't do any of that stuff. She says, listen, go to your dad's house and stay there because I got a son and as soon as he's up old enough I'll give him a son and he'll carry on your heritage yeah. okay sounds like a good plan mm -hmm. but notice what it says it says till she will be, be grown for he said let's peradventure he died also I love that part that the city's kind of out of place but it makes sense why wow, because so far everybody died yeah. Right? Yeah. So he throws that little bit in there. Says right. you go wait for him to grow up, you know, for eventually, you know, unless he died, you know. Yeah. You you go you go wait for him. But when he raised up, now listen, remember I told you how the Bible all ties together? Remember in the, yep. in the book yep. of Ruth? Yep. Remember when Ruth and Orpah were leaving with Naomi? Naomi said, Go back to your hometown and find yourself some husbands. She says, Because even if I had a baby today. Would you wait for him to grow up? Not at all. Okay? That's what he said. Would you wait for him to grow up? And that's what's happening here. He's saying, look, wait for me. We don't know how old this dude is at the moment. Right. So wait. When he gets up, I'll give him to you. Then he can carry on your, your name. Mm -hmm. So it says, and Tamar went and dwelt at her father's house. So Tamar is a good lady so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She goes and stays at her her uh, uh, father's house. Verse 12 says, In the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. A whole bunch of dying going on, eh? Folks dying, that's right. A whole bunch of dying going on. It says, And Judah was comforted. So now Judah knows how it feels to lose the one you love. Oh, hold right? Oh, so God. Judah was comforted and went up into the sheep shearers in Timnah. He and his friend Hira, the Adulamite. Now, every time I see that this word Adulamite, I need to look it up because, you know, so far there's a whole bunch of mixing going on in here. Mm. But he's an Adulamite, okay? Look at verse 13. It says, And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, the father in, thy father in law goeth up to Timnah to shear his sheep. Yeah. What's he going to do? He going up to Timna uh, to shear his sheep. Verse 14 says, And she put on her widow's garments off her. She put her widow's garments off her. Let's stop you just for a second. Come on now. <laughs> so because she was a widow, yeah. she was dressing like a widow. Yeah. Yes. Now, exactly what this meant in their time, I'm not sure. But apparently, there was a certain way that widows dressed so that when you saw them, you yeah. knew they were widows. They were widows, yes. Okay? So, she put on her widow clothes. <laughs> okay? 
But apparently, when she heard this happen, she took her widow clothes off. Okay. And she, <laughs> she, she put her widow's garments off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself. Stop that just for a second. And she wrapped herself, so she changed her clothes. Yes, she did. Why? Because she wanted to present herself as something else now. Hello? See, as believers, we are to put on Christ. We are to put off our old man. We are to put off our old ways. We are to put off our old conversations and put on Christ. Why? Because we are Christians now, and we want everybody to know us as Christians. We don't want to act like fools because we're not fools no more. Come on now. We're children of the king. So we act like king, king's children, and we behave ourselves like king's children, and we dress like king's children. Ooh, now, I ain't talking about this stuff that a lot of people get caught up in. I ain't talking about uh, uh, this. It's just that what we, we, we present ourselves right. as children of God. Right. She's been presenting herself as a widow. Well, now she put off the widow stuff, mm -hmm. and she put on something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Uh, now, now listen, she's going to tell you why. It says in verse 14, And she put off her widow's garment from off her, and covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place, which is by the way to Timna. Listen. For she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given unto him yeah. to wife. She didn't put off her widow's clothes because she got tired of being a widow. No. She didn't put off her widow's clothes and put on some other clothes and go sit in the place by the way because she just got bored. No. She put it off because the promise made to her by Judah was not being fulfilled. Here's another bad decision. Huh. Judah hasn't kept his word. Yeah, well. Because Judah hasn't kept his word, Woo. he's now putting her in a position where now she's got to go out and do something that she would not be doing Ooh, if my, he my, my. had kept his word. My, my, my. If she knew what she was doing, what would happen? Okay. Oh, listen to me. Bad decisions on our part force other people to make decisions they would never have made if we had done ours. Bad decisions in the family will filter down to the rest of the family. Don't you ever lie to yourself and say it's your business. You can do whatever you want to do. Everything we do affects somebody else. Everything we do affects somebody else. No man is an island to himself. Come on, come on. Everything you do is yeah. going to affect somebody else. It's just my business. No, it ain't just your business. Come on now. No, it's not. Yeah. I remember, um, I'll give you a short one. Uh, I was in Salt Lake City, and this guy, uh, long story short, I saw him uh, making eyes at somebody he shouldn't have been making eyes at. Mm -hmm. So I caught him before things went off the rail. Mm -hmm. And I sat him down, and you know how sweet and nice I am. I know. I got in his face, and, and, and we had a talk. You know, I mean, talk. And listen, he did not have to read between the lines to figure out what I was saying. Come on, man. I was rather blunt with him. Mm -hmm. I told him exactly what was going to happen if he did this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he hadn't done nothing yet. They were just going down the road. Mm -hmm. Okay? I, I tried to stop him from going down the road. I got him before anything had happened. Yes, and yes. I laid out everything that was going to happen if you do this. Well, well. And I said, one of the things that's going to happen is our church is going to be front page news in the newspapers. Mm, mm. See, I tried to help him understand how everybody else was going to be affected by right. what he, he was about to do. Right. I know what you want to know. But did he listen to your pastor? Nobody listened to Pastor Tim. What are we talking about anyway? No, 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 he didn't listen. And everything I told him was going to happen fell right in place, just like I said. It affected everybody. 
In fact, he was really close to retiring from the military. I think he had just retired before wow. he did it, and that saved him. Oh. Because if he had done it, you know, a month earlier, you know, weeks earlier, he would have lost his retirement. Yes, yes. Which would have also messed up his family yes. forever. Come on now. See, people say, you know, it's my business. No, it ain't. Come on now. Bad decisions. In fact, good decisions do the same thing now. Don't get it wrong. They do. Come they bless. Now. They become Come a blessing. Bad now. decisions will snowball and they will cause somebody else. Oh, who you ready? Bacon. Anybody ever seen the movie Thelma and Louise? Oh, yes. Oh, you got to see that movie. Oh. Thelma and Louise. See, a lot of times people get caught up and they think, well, it's got to be a Christian music. No, if you pay attention, the principles are there. You will learn from the principle. Thelma and Louise is a perfect example of what we're talking about right here. Two women who, who were treated terribly in the beginning. They were right. And as they went along, driving along, driving along, drove through Utah, by the way. A lot oh, of the movie was shot did. here in Utah. <laughs> Came driving through and so forth. Mm -hmm. Things that kept happening made them do things that they would not have normally mm -hmm. done. Yes. They were innocent when they started. On the end, they were murderers. That's right. That's right. Why? Because one bad decision mm -hmm. led to another. Mm -hmm. One so bad decision bad. led to another. <laughs> Even the police knew they were innocent. That, that, that FBI uh, in, uh, investigator guy, he knew the way in the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But one bad decision yes. led to another. Yes. So go, go find the movie, Devin Louise. <laughs> I'm, tell, I'm telling you, it's a good movie. If you pay attention, yes. you can watch. Yes. It, it will teach you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They were innocent in the beginning. In the end. Yeah. And none of it was because they wanted to. No. Their hand was forced by somebody else. Come on now. Wow. Okay. Wow. So, it says for, um, verse uh, 14, And she put off her, her widow's garment from her and covered her with a veil yes. and wrapped herself and sat in an open place. She sat in an open place, which is by the way. She sat by the street. Yes. <laughs> uh, to yes. tempt them. Yes. For she saw that Sheila was grown and she was not given unto him to wife. Now listen, she's waiting for Judah. She's not just waiting for anybody. Come on now. Okay? She's not just out there saying, I'm going to find me a man. She's waiting for him because she's she going to force somebody to play the kinsman redeemer for her. Wow. Shouldn't have had to, but she's going to. Verse 15 says, when Judah saw her, he thought her to be a harlot. Mm -hmm. why, she, why did he think she was a harlot? Because she was dressed yes, like one. <laughs> yes, she was. Can I say something real quick? Yes. If you don't want people to think you are, <coughs> then don't act like one. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. okay. Don't dress Come like on. one, don't act like one. That's right. And nobody won't get mistaken. That's right. Mm. Okay. Because she had covered her face. So apparently that was what they did. I don't know. I didn't live there. But they knew. Okay. So apparently that's what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, so in, they didn't have they didn't have uh, six inch heels, red, black dress. They didn't have that back then. So she couldn't dress up like that. Okay. No, no. Verse 16 says, he turned unto her by the way and said, go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, what would thou give me that thou mayest come unto me? So she's smart. She said, I ain't free. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we can stay here and talk for a little while. The Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. That's what's happening into, into society today. Yeah. I don't, I don't mean to seem hard, but I, I, I got to be honest with you. If you're giving everything away for free, why should anybody commit to anything? Come on, come on. Okay? If, if they can get whatever they want without any commitment from you, without any responsibility, why shouldn't they? Yeah. And why are you going to be, be shocked at the while down the road when you find out that you've been used up yeah. and still have nothing to show for it? Well, ladies, I'm going to tell you something. Men the same way with you, but it, it just happens to lean more to, to the ladies' side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Men want what they can't have. 
So if you keep giving freely, they don't want you no more. I'm just being blunt with you. We, we having a father-daughter talk right now. I'm just being honest with you. Okay? So he says, what are you going to show me? What will you give me that thou mayest come in unto me? And verse 17 says, and he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. In other words, girl, I got you covered. I got you covered, girl. I, I'll, I'll send it to you later. That's what, what people fall for all the time. Later. Then, then, then you'll get it later. Okay, now don't, don't do this, but I'm just trying to, you know. Don't take the, well, he promised. He promised. They always promise. They never fulfill. Okay? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, what would, would thou give me a pledge till you send me? What's your down payment? What, what's your IOU? What do you got as a, a holding place for what you're promising me down the road? She's, she's, she's up in the game. She's up in the game. But look what she does. I'm going to show you how sick this is. Watch how sick this is. Verse 18. And, he's, and he said, what pledge shall I give thee? He asked her, what do you want? And she said, look. Thy sickness and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thy hand. Now, since none of y'all can relate to any of this, you don't know what she just asked for. She asked for everything up front. She asked for his signet. You know what a signet ring is? Remember when they put Jesus in the tomb? Yes. And it said they signed it with a singing room. Yes. That was your sign of authority. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That was your mark. Mm -hmm. Nobody else had a mark like that. Mm -hmm. She asked for that. Who gonna give that out? Wow. He did. Mm -hmm. Wanna well, know why? Ah, ah. Yep. Because because he was like he was like proverbs. <laughs> it talks about the simpleton that walks along the street. Yeah. And he goes by her house, That's and she calls him in to them, That's and he goes in, That's you know, right. in the south, we said, she had his nose wide open. She sure did. Right? She had, oh, that girl got his nose wide open. Well, she got a hook in his nose. Hey. And he... <laughs> Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Break it down. She had him. And he wasn't thinking straight at all. He wanted that woman. He was willing to give her everything. You know? And, and that's and that's how men are today. Sign over your house. Sign up. Look, uh, um, Esau gave away his birthright for a bowl of soup. For a bowl of soup. Wow. And it wasn't even beef and potatoes. <laughs> it was bean soup. Well, that's a great She asked for everything. His staff. You know what a staff is? A staff usually has your history written on it. Yes, yes, yes. It's the walk with, it also has your history on it. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me hear you one. Remember when David took the, the smooth stones and it says he took his staff? I always thought about that. That was crazy. If I'm going to fight somebody with a slingshot, I don't need my staff in my hand. It's going to throw me off. Mm -hmm. His staff was his history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He went to God, depending on his history with God. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all. Wow, that's good. Oh, my goodness. That's how you're going to win your battles. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to fight in your battles and win some battles. Because with each battle that you win, it strengthens you for the next battle. Come on, God. You go into the next battle standing on your history from the last battle. That's good. That's, Come on. That's how your confidence is. Yeah. He, he delivered me once. He'll deliver me again. Come on. Come on now. I keep on going. <laughs> so, so, so she asked for everything. She asked for his signet. She asked for his, his bracelets and for his staff. You know what she was saying, bro? You ain't going to leave me hanging. Because I got all your stuff. I got proof of who you are. I got you. See, lady, you got to learn to drive that same hard bargain. Come on now. If he wants you, I said, if he wants you, y'all sell yourself too cheap. That's too cheap. Come on now. 
listen, I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. Now, please don't go nuts on me and get into that. I'm, 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 I'm using principles here, okay? I'm using principles, not specifics. Principles. Listen, the whole feminist movement was the worst thing y'all ever could have done. You thought that gave you power. It didn't. It cost you. Women literally could rule the world, but it's not through feminism. Because we men are desperate without you. Come on now. Yes. You could rule the world, mm -hmm. but you went about it all wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, you bought the lie of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Feminism costs you. Mm -hmm. It costs you dearly. So she said, What pledge are you gonna give me? He gave her all this. And since he gave it to her, he didn't even argue with it. She could have asked for more. I want your wallet. I want your brand new Lexus. That's I, right. I want half your you're house. She asked for all that stuff. You know, she asked for all that stuff. And he, by the way, he gave it to her. He didn't even think about it. He just gave it to her. But then he came into her and she conceived by him. Look, verse 19. And she arose, went away, look, laid by her, laid by her veil and her, and put on the garments of her widow. What she do? She went back to who she is. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Them garments served her for the moment. Mm -hmm. But please notice, she didn't look for any man. She's gonna she, she was she's gonna blow this thing up in such a way that it seems crazy for us, but in their culture, she just yeah. hit a home run. In her culture, she just hit a home run. And she arose, went, put away that stuff, and put back on her with hood. She wasn't a harlot. No, no. Okay? She wasn't a harlot. Okay? Then she would have kept them clothes on. Okay? Mm -hmm. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, mm -hmm. to receive his place. So Judah came back home and said, I got to get my stuff back. Mm -hmm. you know, we got we to keep this hush hush. Can't let everybody know what I've been doing. <laughs> we gotta keep this much push. I gotta get my stuff back. Yeah. So he got home, he got he grabbed, he got the kid just like he said. Wow. Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend, the Dulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, and he found her not. This ain't gonna be as smooth as he think it is. Ooh. Ooh. come on now. And it never is. Come on now. Whatever you do underhanded things, you think you got it covered, it's never going to be as smooth as you think it is. It's never going to go on without a hitch, as they say. Oh, like clockwork. No, it ain't. There's always going to be a curve in there. Come on now. Always going to be a curve in there. Okay? Then he asked Then he asked the men. He couldn't find her, right? The dude like, he's cool because he didn't do it. And no, that's the other thing. Notice he didn't go back to get it himself. <laughs> he made the mess. Didn't want to come yeah, the criminals mess. never return to the scene of the crime, do they? Mm -hmm. Right? He made the mess. He made the mess, but he sent somebody else to clean it up. Oh. Right? Wow. And that's, that's how it is. Wow. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot that was openly by this, the wayside? And they said, There was not, a, a, there was no harlot in this place. What do you do? He asked the men, where was the harlot that's in this place? Why did he ask the men? Because they would know where the harlots are. Okay? And the men knew, look, that there wasn't no harlot in this place. Why? Because they knew where the harlots hung out at. Hung out at. Okay? They knew there wasn't one in this place. Because if it was, they would have known about it. Okay? Wow. Verse 22. See, see, listen. Bad decisions are going on. Everybody's in trouble now. Yeah. Everybody's talking about things they don't want to be talking about. Everybody's going to places they wouldn't be going yeah. if people hadn't made bad decisions. Yeah. You'll find yourself in places you would have never went. That's right. Because somebody's making bad decisions. Verse 22. Says he turned, he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. And also the men of that place said there was no harlot in this place. And they wouldn't know. Verse 23. And Judah said, Let her take it to her. Let her take it to her, lest we be shamed. Lest we be shamed. Behold, I sent this kid, and thou has not found her. What's wrong with you, Dulamite? 
I sent you to take care of my business to fix this thing, and you didn't finish the job. You did not find her. This is going to get ugly. And that's what always happens. Whenever you're doing stuff you're not supposed to do, you got to keep it quiet. Whenever you're a liar, you got to remember who you lied to and what lie you told them. And you got to hope that nobody don't find out about it. All of a sudden, darkness starts descending on you. Why? Because you made bad decisions. You did things you wouldn't have done under normal circumstances. And now it's bad. And you're doing your best to cover this stuff up and make it work. Remember King David? Yes. The throw that and saw Bathsheba? Yes. Right? Ended up having to kill her husband. Didn't have to, but he did it to cover his mess. Mm -hmm. Bad decisions always keep going that way. Mm -hmm. Well, on verse 24, tell me how we're going to do verse 30. Verse 24. And it came to pass about three months after. Came to pass. About three months after. Come on now. Come on okay? now. About three months after. Stuff done developed. Yeah. Stuff's starting to happen, y'all. At <laughs> <laughs> hey, first one, when it came to pass, about three months afterwards, see, that's what happens. Whenever you whenever you do stuff, it may take a little while before it begins to manifest. My goodness. But it's going to manifest. It will. And it came to pass that three months after that it was told Judah saying, Tamar. Let's see. Tamar, thy daughter-in-law, has played the harlot. How did you know that? Because in three months, she started showing. That's right. Okay? And also, behold, she is with child by whoredom. My, my, my. How did they know that? How did they know? Mm -hmm. She ain't married. See, just a song. Okay? She is, she is but, uh, uh, pregnant by whoredom. <laughs> And Judah said, bring her forth and let her be burned. Bring her forth and let her be burned. Remember the lady who was caught in adultery by herself? Remember that lady? They brought that lady who was caught in adultery. They didn't bring the man. They said the law says she must be stoned. The law says both of them must be stoned. But they didn't bring the man. Here they tra they trash and tame her. Saying, let her, they don't even want to know who impregnated her. Mm -hmm. Isn't that how a society is today? Mm -hmm. It depends on who you are That's as to right. what they want to do. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay? Yeah. One person can do this and nobody don't say a word. Mm -hmm. Somebody else do this, all oh, hell breaks loose mm -hmm. here. Okay? Ah. It depends on who you are. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I wasn't going to go there, but anyway, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> So they said, bring her forth and be burnt. And that's funny too. He's he really mad because normally they say stone. Oh, yeah. He said, bring her, be burn her like you burn a witch. Oh, oh, oh. So he real mad that his daughter in law played the harlot. He never okay. <laughs> he, he, he ain't figured out yet that he played he played the harlot. <laughs> she, she played the harlot. He played the harlot. Okay. So he ain't figured that part out yet. He think it's three months have gone by. He think all this long, you know. My goodness. So it says, verse 25, notice what she said. And when she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law saying, by the man whose deeds are, am I with child. And she said, discern, I pray thee, whose these descendant and bracelets and staff, who did this belong to? She doesn't even argue with the fact that they're going to burn. She doesn't even talk about that. She said, but if you're going to burn me, understand, you need to burn this fellow who this belongs to. Because this who I'm pregnant by. Well, Listen carefully, ladies and, and anybody. When people do you like this, you can't play the sweet role. Come on now. You got to bring out all your guns, too. Come on now. Okay. Locked and you, you, you can't make it easy for them to take you out. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. I don't want to get, no, 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 look, this is war. That's right. That's They're right. about to burn you now. That's right. Don't you go down down the tube without showing who this is. That's right. That's right. Okay. Especially since that. the one who belong, this belonged to is the one who's saying burn you. Oh, my but, goodness. But, but listen, notice she kept her files. 
<laughs> she kept her documents together. Yes, she, 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 she kept the blue dress. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, so she kept everything and said, who this belonged to, that's how I'm pregnant. You, you calling me a whore. You're going to burn me as a whore. Okay, This is the one who impregnated me. So who was I whoring with? Make a play, make a play. It's what she's saying. Call him out. People are always talking about somebody fooling around. They had to fool around with somebody. Come on now. They, they, do yeah, they always call out one person in the group. Oh, they, say, oh, they fooled around with somebody. That's right. Come on. You can't yeah. do it by yourself. You, you, you can't trust men. They all dogs. Well, they dogging with somebody. Come on now. Somebody <laughs> call them to be a dog. So if the men are dogs, the women got to be dogs too. Because they dogging with somebody. Somebody gave him a dog. Right. So I, I'll keep on going. I keep on going. I know. It's, it's getting boring. Oh my goodness. So it says, here's what Judah said. Oh. See, see what happened? All these bad decisions are snowballing now. Oh. Everybody's in a mess. Oh. All because you started out with somebody who didn't do what they should have did. If this dude in the beginning only had done what he was supposed to do, well, none of this would happen. Well. Well, in fact, if his daddy was evil, he wouldn't have had to do it. Well, <laughs> See how this just keeps sliding down the hill? Yeah. That's why in your life, especially in your family, if you know that your family has a bad heritage or bad history, as a Christian, you need to stand up and say the buck stops here. Mm -hmm. You don't want that stuff sliding down hill on you. Mm -hmm. And people say it won't. Yes, it will. Yes, it can. Mm -hmm. If you don't stop the slide, it can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People say everybody in their family is, is is alcoholics, and you don't want to admit that. But if you look at it, you see we are. Mm -hmm. Grandpa was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Papa was an alcoholic. Uncle Joe was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. See that gene, that seed that's been planted in that family. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and it, it can come all kinds of different ways, but you got to stand up and say, not so. Mm -hmm. I rebuke this stuff in the name of Jesus. It stops here. It will not pass on to me. I'm yes. the one who's standing here to say that my family will no longer be known as this. Yes. Yes. You ever seen families where everybody in the family go to jail? Mm -hmm. Come on now. Like right? You can see it. Mm -hmm. Everybody in that family go to jail for one thing. It just goes right down the line. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to say not no more. That's right. You know, I work with a guy. And I remember we used to struggle. We, we struggled. Listen, because I'm such a uh, an easygoing guy that y'all love so much, and, and you don't hear me talking all that crazy stuff that they're talking today, you may, you may think I don't know about any of that stuff. Oh. But I worked 37 years for the government. And I'm yeah. telling you, I saw my share of garbage. Well, come on now. I was treated bad more times than you can shake a stick at. But I made a decision that I wasn't going to let that be my banner. Come on now. Wow. I wasn't going to let that be the banner that I live my life under as a victim. I wasn't going to do that. I made that decision, which is the same decision you got. Too. Come on now. But I worked with a guy who faced some of the same stuff that I did. And I remember he told me something one day. It blew me away. It, it, it put feet to it for me. He said, Tim, I don't care what they do to me. They are not going to get rid of me. He said, I'm going to be the first person in my family to ever retire from a job. Come on now. He said, my whole family history is people living on welfare. Mm -hmm. He says, I am not going to be one of those people. Come on now. He said, that's why I can put up with some of the garbage I put up with. He says, because they are not going to run me away. Mm -hmm. I am going to retire from this. Mm -hmm. I said, I hear you, brother. High five mm -hmm. on that. We're going to retire. Come on now. Okay. Somebody has to say, no, the buck stops here. That's it. That's it. Okay. The buck stops here. Yeah. And so he, he, he did it. He, he did it. In fact, I saw him a little while uh, after he retired. He not only retired, he got to be one of the supervisors down there for the last three years, which took his money up. Mm. Last I heard, he's living in Hawaii right now. Go ahead. Go ahead now. <laughs> but see, the decisions he made are going to affect not only him, but also his kids. Yeah. They're going to affect his kids. Mm -hmm. So Judah, verse 26, and Judah acknowledged him and said, this is what he said, she has been more righteous than I. Mm -hmm. See, in our culture, we think, well, man, she played the harlot, man, she played the whore, that's terrible, that's terrible, no, no. In their culture, they understood what she did. Mm -hmm. She didn't do it because she was a loose woman. She did it because nobody else 
did their job, so she had to step up and do it. She didn't. She didn't go on the on the, on the side of the street and just pick any old man. She knew that her her father-in-law was coming and that he was going to be the kinsman redeemer since nobody else would to save her family. This is why when we read the Bible, we also got to be careful because there's cultural things that take place that you can't swing to our culture. We don't do it the same way they did it. Verse 27 says, And it came to pass in the time of her travail that, behold, twins were in her room. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread, mm -hmm. saying, This came out first. Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? Because it's the firstborn. Right, yeah, there's right. blessings that come with being the firstborn. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's there's uh, uh, authority and inheritance, all kinds of stuff about being the firstborn. Mm -hmm. Verse twenty nine. Mm -hmm. So then it came to pass as he drew as he drew back his hand that behold the brother came out and she said, "How?" So when one stuck his hand out, she tied a, a thread on his hand. He pulled it back in, and the other brother came out first. Wow! Wow! Okay, and she said. Uh, the midwife took him bound upon him, verse 29, and it came out to pass that, that he drew back his hand, that behold, the brother, the, the, his brother came out, and she said, how has thou broken forth? How did you flip this thing around to where you came out first? You weren't the firstborn. Then she says, this breach be upon thee. Therefore his name was Phares. And afterwards came out his brother, and he had a scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zero. I'll be sure with you that even the birth of the child shows turmoil, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It shows that something strange is happening to us because they started it out up here and it just kept going down the family tree, wow. going down, wow. going wow. down, going down, going down, creating all kinds of stuff. Folks, listen, don't get started down the way. Don't ever let the devil tell you that you can take a shortcut, that the rules don't apply to you, that the word of God doesn't apply to you. You're the exception <coughs> to all this stuff. Don't ever let the devil tell you that because once you start making bad decisions, it's just going to keep snowballing. My goodness. It's going to snowball and get worse and worse. It's going to affect everybody around you. Everybody's going to, oh, I'm about to go, but I can't. And let me give you an example. Remember the old lie that we say? Whatever happens in this house stays in this house. You don't sell anybody. And we think we got it covered. What happens? Come on now. You you force people who are innocent to carry your lies with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You force them to live their lives mm -hmm. based on the lies. <coughs> based on the fact that wow. you did it, but they had to keep it all secret. Wow. Okay. Wow. It will snowball. It, it will affect them for the rest of their lives. It will wow. affect people. Now, I'm not telling you what God can't do. I'm talking about the natural progression Come of things. Now. Come on now. The natural progression of things, yep. it will affect them for the rest of their lives. Yep. They, um, Abraham, Abraham told Abimelech that Sarah was his, his, uh, his sister, sister yeah. when she was his, his wife yes. and messed. Isaac did the same thing later on. He just went on down through, yes. through the family. He did yes. the same thing. Yes. Bad decisions will snowball and snowball and snowball. Your grandkids, your great grandkids, everybody be living based on the lie that mm -hmm. happened way back. three, four generations ago. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Get in the right way. Yes. Start a new. Ooh, last card. Remember I told you when we were talking about sin and, and how because Adam and, in, Adam and Eve sinned, God had to do something? Yes. yes. Remember I told you about Fulton J. Sheen when he said, uh, he used an illustration about an orchestra. And he said, you're playing the score and everybody has sheet music in front of them. And you're all playing the, yes, the score. Yes, yes. And then one person decides yes. to strike yes. a foul note. Yes, yes. And I would say, there's nothing you can do about it. I don't care if you stop the music, the foul note's still going. Yes. You can't stop it. Yes. The only thing you can do is take that foul note and make it the first note of a new song. So of a new song. <laughs> Why am I telling you that? Because in your family, in your life, if you're going down that thing, start a new song. Start a new song. Change it down. 
Good stuff. If stuff's coming down your life, your hit your history, if it goes back and everybody knows and your family's known for this and your side is known for that, you no, know, start a new song. You start a new song. You don't have to keep singing that same old dead song from all that mess that came down through your history. Come on. Okay? You start a new song. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Stuff. I'm done. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Father, we want to thank you so much for what you've spoken to us today. You're not trying to make us feel bad or trying to make us that you're trying to warn us that we need to make good decisions. Because if we make bad decisions, it's not just gonna be on us. It's going to affect everybody around us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to have to live with that lie. Everybody's going to have to live with that decision. And Lord, those of us who know in our own past that we've, 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 we've got a history of, of just crazy stuff happening. We're saying, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? We're struggling the song. <laughs> so Father, we want to thank you for your grace in our mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the way that you always set things up to where it never has to end in a permanent loss or in a permanent bad situation. Yes. Where we were born doesn't have to end. Uh, determine where we end up. Come on, the mess that we, we started out in doesn't have to be the mess that we finish in. Yes, it can change. So Lord, we ask today that you bring change in our lives. Yes, that you bring change in our lives. Yes, Lord, if we've never received you as personal Savior, we've never asked you to forgive us for our sins, We've never asked you, Lord, to change us from the inside out. We do so right now. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us. We ask, Lord, that you would create in us a clean heart. And to place us into a place where our, our mind and our heart line up with your mind and your heart. We want to change. But we need you to change us. And we'll walk in the change that you're doing in us. Lord, if we've gone down the wrong roads and made all kinds of crazy decisions, we stop right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We say this is the end of the road for us as far as going down that wrong path. If we have believed lies, we say today, Lord, we refuse to believe those lies anymore. Mm -hmm. Where there's lies about you, Lord, or whether it's lies about ourselves. Come on now. Mm. We refuse to believe those lies no more. And we seek the truth that comes from you. Yes. If we made decisions, Lord, in the, in, in, in the distant past as well as in the recent past, we stop right now. We put a plug in that leak. Mm -hmm. And we say no more, Lord. Mm -hmm. You, Lord, do what needs to be done to fix the mess that we made. Ooh, we confess yeah. that we can't fix it. Yes. And we depend on your grace to do so. We all are saved by grace. Oh. Not only from hell, but every day. Come on now. Come we need the now. grace of God. That's right. Every day. Oh. Well, we're not going to do that. Our, our name, our life story is not going to be what it used to be. Oh. We receive a new name and a new story starting right now. We're born again ones, people who love God, who serve God, and who are going to walk with God. We're no longer going to be victims of the enemy. We're not going to fall for the lies of the enemy. We're not going to uh, put our focus on the enemy. We've got time to be concentrating on the enemy. We're going to be focusing on the Lord. In his presence is fullness of joy. He will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is staying on him. No, we ain't going to be concentrating on the devil and what anybody else is saying. We're going to hear what you're saying, Lord. Change our names today, Lord. Spiritually change our names today. We're not going to be defeated one. We're not going to be the confused one. We're not going to be the emotionally unstable one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No more. No more. We're not going to be the one who's always walking in the darkness. Or, or bouncing back and forth between the light and the darkness. Light and the darkness. 
light and the darkness no more. We will stay in the light <coughs> because you're in the light. We're not going to have that mentality where I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Mm -hmm. We're going to be can-do people. I can do all things yes. to Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things mm -hmm. to Christ who strengthens me. Yes. We're not going to be those people who always need somebody to help us up, help us up. No, we're going to be people who are standing firmly mm -hmm. on, the, on solid ground, mm -hmm. and we're going to help other people. We're going to go <laughs> from... The, uh, from being the needy to being the person who helps those in need. Because you are everything, Lord. You are everything. So we put our trust in you. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Yes. Our story changes today. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Amen.